Hey guys, it's Phoenix Automotive here, and in this video we're going to be looking at the radios for the Jeep Wrangler. This is from 2018 to 2021, and the vehicle we have here today is the 2021 electric model. Uh, the two radios we have, we have the Android 9 version and Android 10 version. Uh, the main difference, of course, is 9 and 10 have different uh, CPUs in them, and the 9 is a little bit bulkier on the back, the 10 is a little bit slimmer. The Android 10 has a four channel speaker output versus the Android 9 only has two. And the two speaker output comes from this harness right here. So it connects to the back over here. And you have a two channels out here as well as a green for the subwoofer. And with the 10, it's a little bit different. You would connect it right here and then you would have two on this channel as well as another two on this small connector. So the Android 10 has a four channel amp with the subwoofer. So this is the Android 9. Today we're gonna to be hooking up the Android 10. It should be quite similar. You can see on both radios that the plugs are almost the exact same, except of course it's a thinner design and Android 10. On the Android 10 radios, you can also decide whether you want to have the matte black finish on the knob or you can have a chrome finish uh, that will be on the website. You have these physical buttons. These physical buttons, they do what they show on the display or on the label, but you can also program certain ones to possibly uh, have a press and hold function to do other functions that you want it to program to. Here is the push to start button and you do need to remove the factory push to start button which is right here and there are two three screws on the back of here to remove this button and move over to our radio you can see uh, removing the factory radio you need to first pop out this AC control then you have two screws down here to remove this bezel piece once you remove the bezel piece, you can take out the monitor, but of course you have screws here as well. Uh, looking at the back connection for the Android 10, couple things. Uh, if you have a factory backup camera, you need to connect this connector up here, and it has a male RCA labeled CCD AVN, so this is an input. And then you have a male harness right here that needs to connect together. So that is the factory backup camera. Uh, you also need to connect this part. We'll get to the connections later, but looking at here, this is the main harness. This main harness. Now let me first get this straight. This is the main harness for the Android 10 radio. The Android 9 only difference is you do not have this two channel extra, so it's only a two channel amp. Versus Android 10, you have these two, as well as this harness that gives you another two and a subwoofer. So Android 9, you only have this and no this. So let's connect the radio. First things first, we need to do is remove the factory parts. On the back, you have the push to start. You have the air conditioning connector. And you have to remove the top monitor. You can see we've already disconnected some. And this is the factory backup camera that we need to disconnect. To remove this plug, you need to push down on the clip so that it flips up. push down and then it'll flip up like so remove the monitor now we did have an extra push to start button so we'll just disconnect this one and we can connect the one that's already on the radio so this is the push to start and then we have the air conditioning this vehicle does have factory USB ports and that is retained uh, it comes with a adapter we don't need this for now we'll put that there uh, looking at other stuff, so we had the main harness, we have the amplifier harness, or extra RCAs. On this same connector, you also have a SIM card reader, 
and you actually have two SIM card readers, one here and one here as well. Just insert it. So far, we've tested our T-Mobile version has been working good. You have a 4G antenna for the SIM card, the radio antenna, and in total, I believe you have uh, three USBs. You have this one right here that connects on the back of the radio, which would go right here. And of course, this cable should be long enough to maybe route on the kick plate of your vehicle or in the glove compartment for access. And you also have the GPS antenna, this GPS antenna. It does, this is an external GPS antenna, but you can see we already have some type of adapter here. This allows you to connect your factory GPS antenna on the vehicle if you want to use the factory one. But again, you can use this one if you want to use it. So in this case, we will be keeping this one on and the uh, 4G antenna, we will screw onto here. As far as the back of the radio goes, we also need to connect a couple more. And this comes from the main harness. This is the Android 9 harness. Let's look at the Android 10 harness. Android 10 harness, we have the extra two channel amps right here. So we'll connect that over here. And looking at this, we also have this connector. This one goes on the side of the radio. Try not to mess up the connections. You don't want to bend any of the pins. So we'll connect this here. Or, uh, hold up. Yeah. Okay. So once you've connected these two on the back and on the extra two channel amps, if you wish to use it, you, uh, we can now connect this to the power on the back of the radio. And we have the main box connector. Now this box connector, now this box connector is actually um, standard with most Dodge vehicles like Dodge Ram or Dodge Durango. And it also has a lot of these RCAs. A majority of these RCAs you may not even need. They're for other vehicles. And now we just need to connect this to the vehicle and we should get it to turn on. So. So again, so again, the easiest one is the box connector. One thing you do have to remember is to connect the factory uh, LVDS cable for the camera. So there's two portions to the camera. There is the factory LVDS cable right here, which comes from this bright red connector. And you also have to recall to connect the male RCA, which comes from this board right here. So this male RCA rear view camera needs to connect to a female RCA, which is the one we connected up here. Uh, right here on the far left. So. Connect the RCA here. Now that you've connected the RCA, you still need to connect the LVDS. And for the air conditioning, you do need to connect this plug. So the air conditioning plug right here. And the LVDS for the factory backup camera. You also need to connect the GPS antenna as well as the radio antenna. Oh. This is the radio antenna. Uh, don't get it mixed up, but I believe the radio antenna is the white one. So we'll connect that radio antenna. That is the radio antenna. Connect it to the back of the radio on the back here. And if you do not plan on using the external GPS, which is right here, you can connect the factory GPS. We do provide this adapter and it should connect to the turquoise one. So this is the GPS. 
Radio antenna is the white one. GPS antenna is the turquoise. So just to go through the connections one more time, you have three at the top here. You have the radio antenna, the GPS antenna, the 4G antenna for the SIM card. You have one SIM card slot on the back here. You also have this harness that allows for another SIM card slot. And these RCAs, you can read the labels, but there are a um, two channel amp on this and two channels on here for a total of four. And the power connector here, factory backup camera LVDS here, also camera connection here, and the air conditioning. Last but not least is the box connector that is right here. So this one, make sure the lever is up and push the lever down, should be connected. Now, pushing this in, just kind of got to put the cables all in the back here so that they fit nice and tug. Use the factory clips from the factory vehicle. Uh, Something like this, you can remove the plastic clips and move them over to our radio to connect the push to start. Let's do that. Bottom. Push to start connected. With this radio, you also can retain the two USB ports on the bottom here, uh, USB-C and USB, as well as the factory aux jack. And I'm gonna show you these two connections right here. So you do need to connect this harness, which had the SIM card on it, and it had two female RCAs, one labeled aux in L, aux in R, and then you had a male RCA here coming from the box connector, which is labeled aux R and aux L. So connect those two together, and it will help retain the factory 3.5 jack on the vehicle. As for the factory USB port, we, again, we had that adapter connector, but this is the connection for the USB. Okay. This is the factory USB on your vehicle, and this is the adapter we provide to help retain it. Cool. So fitting the radio into the vehicle is a pretty tight fit, but you just got to wiggle the cables into the back hole of the panel on the car or just inside the vehicle. And once you have it lined up with all the cables not being squished or not being cut by any plastics, you should be able to push it in. Oh shit. 